Ready. Friends and family of the Seaview Tabernacle, welcome to this another Bible study from your host, Pastor Horace Ford, as he continues the theme, <coughs> The Real Christian. Today's topic is loyalty to Christ. Turn with me now in your Bibles to Acts chapter 9, reading from ver reading verses 5 and 6. Pastor Foss, what do you read for us, please? And he said, O thou Lord, and the Lord said, I am Jesus, whom thou persecutest. It is hard for thee to kick against the prick. And he trembling and astonished said, Lord, what will thou have me to do? And the Lord said unto him, Arise, and go into the city, and it shall be told thee what thou must do, the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. As we study today, we just pray that the Lord will open up your understanding, that you will understand his word one more time. And that the word will become meaningful to you and sweet. And so we're just going to pray now and then. Go on. Let's pray. Father, thank you for today. Thank you for your word. Thank you for the opportunity to bring your word to your people. And as Father, we speak of loyalty, may we understand what it, what it means to be loyal. May we understand the word, the meaning of the word. And may we apply the word to our hearts. So bless us now, Lord. Remember all those who asks us to pray, those who are um, suffering, Lord, from the different illnesses, we just pray for them. Those who are mourning, the Williams family, mourning for the death of Tania, we just pray for them in a special way this afternoon and pray that you would be there and bring them close to your side. Guide us now, Lord, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. I know. Turn over to Pastor. I won't take up any more of your time. And we'll turn over to Pastor. But remember to like, share, and subscribe to the channel. Amen. Thank you, Sister Forbes. As we continue on the theme, the real Christian. And today's topic is the real Christian is loyal. To Christ. And I want us to get it in our mind. Because if you are a Christian. You are going to show your loyalty. To Christ. To, to Christ. Mm -hmm. He has a loyalty to Christ. That was the Apostle Paul. When he uh, got saved. And ever since. He was loyal. To the Lord Jesus Christ. So loyalty speaks to affirm allegiance or faithfulness to a person. A genuine Christian, as we mentioned, as a link to Christ. And we have looked on that already. And this link is a divine relationship that we have. And if you have a relationship you are going to have fellowship with your Lord and Savior. A genuine Christian has a love for Christ. I love him because he first loved me. So because he loved me, then you and I must in turn love him. And uh, the, the love requires an attitude of heart. What comes from the inside. This love requires a striving at all time to obey him. So as Christian, not only are we going to uh, have an attitude, but we're going to try striving always to obey him. And uh, this love also requires a true Fellowship. We are going to have fellowship 
with our blessed Lord. So loyalty should be shown to Christ. Are you a Christian? Yes. Then I'm expecting you to be loyal or to become loyalists to our blessed Lord. And some people are loyal to their denomination. Some people are loyal to some organization. Some are loyal. They give allegiance to, yes, their tradition and rituals. Some people are loyal to their political leaders or to, or to politics. But the question I might ask you today, are you loyal to the one who love you? Are you loyal to the one to whom you are linked? Are you loyal to the one who gave himself for you? What will thou have me to do? This was the Apostle Paul's uh, answer to the Lord Jesus Christ. So first of all, loyalty speaks to suffering. Going through suffering. And God desire us to share also in his suffering. If you love him, you're going to stick to him. You are going to be faithful to him. It doesn't matter what you might be going through. And the Apostle Paul said in uh, Philippians 3 and verse 10, that I may know him and the power of his resurrection and the fellowship of his suffering. So therefore he was saying the fellowship of the suffering of Christ is more important to me. And Paul, as I said, was loyal to the Lord. Paul talks about the fellowship of suffering. And how can a believer have fellowship in suffering? So the real uh, Christian will demonstrate loyalty. And I wonder Paul said that they that live godly in Christ Jesus will suffer persecution. And 2 uh, Timothy 3 and verse 12. So when a Christian is loyal to Christ, he will experience Christ's suffering. He will experience Christ's suffering. And secondly, he will experience the working of death in his life. Because you do not belong to the Lord. And Paul said, let no man trouble me because I bear the mark of Christ. So it is very important for us to know and to understand. It is not only to know that we are saved. And therefore, to be loyal to, the, to Christ, it means that as he said, that he will experience disappointment for Christ's sake. There's going to be disappointment as we serve the Lord. Paul uh, said persecution, yes. Abandonment, yes. Struck down, yes. For the Lord, yes. But I am not destroyed. Second Corinthians 4 and, uh, uh, and verse 9. And this speaks of the loyalty that the believers has for the Lord. And therefore, are you going through a time of sadness? Tears? Are you going through a time of troubles? Could it be perplexities and fears? Brethren, this is not to defeat you or to discourage you, but God has a purpose in your life. So as you go through your affliction and your sadness, stay loyal to the Lord. The Lord has a purpose in your life. And this is God's divine power working in the life of the believer is working in you 
to accomplish his purpose. This means every suffering we may be more than conqueror by God's power. Romans 8 and verse 37. In spite of suffering, let us be loyal to the Lord. Yes, this also means every suffering draws from Christ's abundant grace. The one that Paul was able to say in 2 Corinthians 12 and verse 9, My grace is sufficient for you, for what my strength is made perfect in your weakness. So whatever weakness you might be going through today, let us remind ourselves that the strength of the Lord is right there with us. And therefore the grace is God's presence. The psalmist said, though you walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will be with you. But secondly, this grace is God's power. As I said, for my strength is made perfect in your weakness and also in your difficulties and also in your sickness. So whatever you might be going through and this grace, yes, will rest upon faithful and loyal believers. And the greater our suffering for Christ, the more grace God will give you to accomplish his will because he has abundance of grace. So let me ask you a question. What are you going through today? What is your problem? What is your perplexities? I am saying like Paul, God's grace is there to supply, to succor, and to keep you. But my grace is God's purpose. Our disgrace is God's purpose. God permits suffering to keep us humble, and this will cause us to depend on the Lord. Maybe we might be going out. Maybe we might be exalting ourselves. But God brings allow these things to come into our life so as to bring us to where we should be. So therefore, yes, loyalty speaks to suffering. But the second thing I want to leave with us, loyalty speaks to service. Because if you are loyal to the Lord, then I'm going to serve him in spirit and also in truth. And God has, has called us for service. We are in his service. And you cannot and must not say that there is nothing that I can do. And God has a part for you in the church to do. Yes, loyalty to the work of the Lord. In serving the Lord, there should be a willingness. Sister Forbes, there should be a what? A willingness. It is first and foremost love for God to serve him. The song said, I will serve him because he loved me. Given his life for me, then I need to give back to him. So loyalty speaks uh, to service and believers' love for Christ will motivate them to serve others. I am serving the Lord, then of course I am going to try to serve others. Paul said, present your bodies. A living sacrifice only acceptable unto God, which was your reasonable uh, service. So Christ set the example for us, and we should be Christ like in our attitude, in our behavior, in our service. He set the example. Jesus wash his disciples feet 
And if I don't want to bring out any doctrinal stand here now, but this was not only a demonstration of love, but it was service. The Bible said, He washed disciples' feet. Look at it. The Creator God, mm. Jesus Christ, mm. came to earth and He took the basin and the towel and water and He washed His service to the disciples. And therefore, they were amazed. And Peter said, Lord, not only my feet, but my whole body. But Jesus Christ was saying to them that you are called to serve. And he was calling disciples to serve one another in humility. And brethren, it is very important. And this is a passion that we all should develop in the church. Yes. We should develop this in the church. And this is lacking in the church today. But the first and our desire is to be first. So I was want to be first. We want to be superior. We want to be honored above more than to be a humble servant, servant of the Lord. Brethren, service is one of the gifts. And there are different ways of service in the church. And Paul indicates that the ministry aspect of the gift reflect the servant ministry servant ministry and nobody wants to be classified as a servant but my brother and sister if you are saved by the grace of god you're a servant and so many times paul said i'm a servant of the lord uh, jesus christ and therefore uh, this gift of service is to help others. What do you have? You're going to help others. What I have, I'm going to help others with my service. So I'm speaking to loyalty to the Lord. And lastly, loyalty speaks to separation. If you love the Lord, then you're going to separate yourself. No one in the Bible said, come out. From among them and be ye separate to the Lord. This is what, what the Apostle Paul was saying. You're going to be loyal to the Lord, not only in suffering, yes, and in your service, but also in separation. You cannot be loving and linking to the Lord, and you're going to mix up with the world. Yes, we have to do business in the world, but we must separate ourselves. From the world. Separate yourself from everything that is contrary, yes, to the Lord Jesus Christ. And this is an ongoing requirement for God's people. Not only when you come to church, you're going to be loyal, you're going to separate yourself. But it's an everyday development in our lives. We're going to separate ourselves. And if Yes, we are going to be loyal to the Lord. We must come out from among them. If we are going to be loyal to the Lord, we must draw near to God in a close and intimate fellowship. Brethren, and we are expected to be holy, to be different from others. We are peculiar people. Yes. We are royal priesthood. And therefore, the Lord is expecting you and I to be different. No one there said, let your what? Light so shine before men that they may see your good work and glorify your Father which is in heaven. And therefore, as I conclude, let us be loyal to our master. He is our master and he is depending on you and I to be loyal to him. Father in heaven, we thank you today for what you have done for us. You could have saved us and you could have taken us out of this world. Yes. 
Mm. But you put back, put us into this world for a particular purpose. You have a plan for us. You have a program for us. So help us by your grace to remain loyal and faithful to you in spite of perplexities, sorrows, and debt. Oh, Lord, help us to be loyal that one day we'll hear from your mouth, well done, the good and faithful servant. Amen. So bless your words today and cause now, Lord, your loving face to shine upon those that are going through difficulties and heartaches mm. and problems and sickness, mm. maybe a disease that is incurable. But, oh God, I pray that that person will remain loyal to the Lord because absent from this life is to be present with the Lord. So in the hands we commend ourselves. To this end we give you thanks in Jesus' name. Amen, amen and amen.